Blessings, fellow weird and wild ones. My name's Goddess, aka G, aka your friendly neighborhood witch. They, them, their pronouns, please and thank you, point blank, period. Thank you for joining me in the practice of finding our way back to wholeness. This is our temple, our playground, our life, and our truths. During our audio session together, I will be talking with my village on how we are healing, changing paradigms, and decolonizing and degendering the mind. You are not alone. You are enough. Let's plant these divine seeds together. This work is for the collective from me, Brandon, Brenda, Kay, and Vesta. And there's a lot of magic that goes on behind the scenes. Find ways to support and resuscitate all the co-creators on the show at the links below. Grab your pens and paper, grab your woes, and let go. Shayna is an 18. <laughs> okay. See, we already started. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me go back. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back. Okay. That, that's getting in now. I'm going to tell Vesta to add that. Okay. Anyway, Shayna. Oh, Lord. Shayna is an 18 year initiated priestess in West African Mommy Wata Voodoo. Yes, yes. She lives in Atlanta and owns two businesses in wellness. Honeycomb Natural Hair, and Rest Rituals Meditation. Shayna currently um, is hosting one-on-one virtual sound meditation rituals that provide clients with both rest and connection with spirit through channel messages during the sound bath. Welcome back, Shayna, because this is your (laughs) second episode with us. I'm so excited to have you back on. What's up? What's up? (laughs) Doof doof over here, okay? <laughs> yes, yes. I'm, I'm going to put a link to that episode, too, because that episode was dope. Um, yeah. So, yeah, thank you again for being back on. So, you already know. So, um, we go through our name, pronouns, and um, ethnicity and bodies. So, I'll go first. My name is Goddess. I use they, them, their pronouns. Um, and I am Black bodied how about you Shayna <laughs> my name is Shayna I go by she her and um I'm all the way melanated <laughs> I probably have some little pinches but I'm not about to go to ancestry.com y'all and give them none of my DNA so we just gonna have to figure that out later <laughs> but yeah we just <laughs> Look, all right it, it, that's yeah, all I got you black yeah, you yeah you that's fan. all I got that's all I got mm-hmm. I'm just plain set on that side okay I mean, yeah. That sounds good to me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, today, where in your body do you feel enlivened and where do you feel dormant? I alive in my stomach and in my chest. I honestly don't feel dormant anywhere as I do my body scan. My toes tingle, my knees, of course, my body. Yeah, I don't feel dormant anywhere. Mm. I I'm love fully that. alive. Yeah, I'm fully alive and mm-hmm. present with it. Yeah, fully present too. That's what I was mm-hmm. going to say, fully present. Yes. Yeah. I hope that continues on throughout the day and the week for you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Thank you. Um, in my body, I feel really enlivened, like in the my temples and like the mm-hmm. my eyes today. Something mm-hmm. just feels a lot less heavy and clear. Mm-hmm. Um, been working on some dream work, and a lot came through the other night. So I feel really enlivened. Um, there. Yes. Um, and dormant. I don't know if I feel dormant. I feel like my body's, um, still waking up. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, that's uh, not dormant, just, just waking up to the day. Um, Yeah. Yeah, Making this way, making this Mm -hmm. way. 
Ooh. Okay, so this particular topic, so you had mentioned this in the, um, our last podcast, and we had talked about it before of doing an episode about um, being a solitary witch and what that means. But mm-hmm. I'd love to hear from you, like, what inspired you to, to have this conversation? Because you were the one who actually kind of created the theme around this episode. Well, <clears throat> anything that speaks um, in the spirit realm that speaks about being solitary, um, anything in a culture that speaks about shutting four walls and not including other elements, and especially the most powerful element, the assumption is you, you know, that you don't want to combine forces, like who that sound like? You know what Uh, I mean? That's just not a thing that there's privacy. um, There is um, you're born. People say like you're born alone and you die alone. All these things, these kind of concepts aren't even true, but it makes us feel great. It makes us feel independent. It makes us feel powerful. And the reality is you were not born alone you were born of your mother and you normally don't die alone because anyone who's had an extra, what do you call it? Uh, uh, they have a little thing for it, like an outer body experience or a near death experience. Mm. What they say is that there are spirits or light or some type of energy on this other side that they were able to experience. Mm -hmm. Um, that was them, but also larger than them that created a peace within them. Um, and so then the work that I do with the voodoo is this plethora, like y'all don't have a clue the amount of energies and forces and spirits just for you. So you're not alone. Right. And so what are you even calling on when you are a solitary witch and you're calling on these these elements in order to be an alchemist? You are asking for all of these forces to come together to maybe change, adjust or whatever, enlighten whatever it is that you're doing. Um, So I just want to be very, very careful for people of color when they are talking about doing things in solitude. A lot of times that has to do with distrust. We live in a culture that tells us to go inside our houses and shut our four doors, to put a fence around our houses, um, to drive only our cars. They reward you if you are in the HOV lane. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, you go a little faster if you put somebody in the car and we try to do this thing as a community, but they don't say just get on the bus. Like if you really want to save the environment, why don't you just get on the bus or get on the train? You know what I mean? So I just always am very critical of things that are always done um, alone. And to take it even further, in divination, normally in the highest forms of divination, where a person looks into what it is that your soul has been called here to do, traditional African traditions, you can't do that with one priest. Why? Because there's accountability. Yeah. Yeah. So when you're talking about doing tarot for yourself, cool. Tarot deals with your subconscious and just how you're thinking. It can change at a whim. But when you're talking about why you were born, there has to be several priestess or priests there together to gather that information to be able to give it to you and your parents. Because a lot of times those are done when you're a child. You can have it done at, I've seen people have it done at 80 years old, right? Like they didn't have access maybe when they were five or at all, you know what I mean? Mm. In the United States especially, but I have seen people go and get their destiny reading at whatever age, and I've never seen it done alone. And there are prayers that we do that we have to touch each other in order to activate that thing or that Mm. prayer. You have to hold someone's hand um, when we're doing rituals, there are people who are literally just there to hold your hand, mm-hmm. you know? So I feel like what we get off on in this country a lot of the times is, well, I can't trust nobody. 
you know, so I, I just have to do this alone or I'm doing magic and I'm really, really afraid of how I'm going to be judged. Um, I don't have any friends who can, I can really talk to about this or celebrate when it does come down the pipe. And so we can sit inside of our houses and Google on YouTube and learn the spell and then do the spell, right? And it's great. But how much more powerful is it if you join hands with at least one other person mm-hmm. or your pet or, you know what I mean, whatever yeah. is available that has a life force to magnify what it is that you're doing. Mm-hmm. Isolating uh, yourself uh it starts to be painful. At first, it feels very liberating because you're doing the stuff, you're doing, you know, what you're doing, you're feeling super powerful about it. But when you have to constantly keep things in secret, it begins to erode you psychologically. Mm-hmm. I'm very, 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 very concerned with that because yeah. I have not ever had to walk this road alone. Fortunately, right? And mm-hmm. there's so many people who have come to me that are like, None of my friends understand. None of my family understands. I have so many people who their family completely rejected them once they knew that they were doing any kind of traditional herbal anything. I mean, they might have just been like, I'm making tea. And people are like, if it ain't Lipton, I don't know what you're doing in there. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing. You talking about a catnip? Who's catnipping? I heard that's what witches do. You know what I mean? It's like, what? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? So just being completely rejected by their family. And I understand it. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying that I'm coming from this place where I'm asking people to be forced to force their family into joining hands and doing, you know, any kind of ancestral ritual or any type of ancestral Mm -hmm. recognition. No. I'm not. All I'm saying is be very, 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 very mindful of anything that turns you away from community. Be very, very, very mindful of things that don't bring your family together. Mm -hmm. Be very, very, very mindful of things that you have to do in secret that would erode your self-confidence, your strength, or not give power to the things that you are doing. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you have to be a solitary witch, Ask yourself why. Is it a choice? Right? Like, is it just something like, okay, I'm choosing this? Or is it because you really don't feel like nobody rock with you? Uh-huh. Or that you don't trust nobody to do these type of magic things that they might do something bad to you. Like, if you join forces with this person, your spell may not come out. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Because they stay and they for you, but they really not for you. You know? Um, yeah. What ways in which can you really strengthen your intuition where if there is somebody who comes around and says they want to do a spell with you, how can you check in with their intentions? Yeah. Above your ego. Right. So that's why you do a divination because it's above your ego. Then you can do a tarot. You can do a pendulum. You know, is Keisha good for me? Is Keisha down for these rituals? Is Keisha's magic up? you know, uh, uh, energetic magic up to par with mine, Mm -hmm. right? So those kind of things. Um, I have so many people who call me and go, I think I want to do Reiki, but like, should I be doing that? Like, that's how deep the trust is, you know what I mean, with Black people, as it should be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, if somebody's in there messing with my energy, I don't know. Right. But they'll go to a doctor and the doctor's name will be John White. And you walk in and John is white. And you're yep. like, cool, look at my uterus. Like, no. <laughs> tell me, tell me what's going on in there. <laughs> right. Thing that you have no. never had. Yeah. John no, it's White. Exact same ma- thing. Right. Right. It's like it's cool. Same thing. Yes. John White is cool looking at your uterus, but you worried about Keisha. And so you're going to do a solid day. What are we talking about here? Like, it don't even make sense. Like, right now, the pit of my stomach, like, my spirits are like, yo, that's nuts. Because it's nuts. Mm -hmm. That is nuts. You go and you pay John White to look at your breast, to look at your inner parts, to look at your toenail. But then you're like, oh, I'm a solitary witch because I don't trust nobody out here. Yeah. You know, so what are you doing? Exactly. 
I I love how you brought up um, about accountability because I don't think I would have. So I became a solitary witch because because of the fact that the the coven I was was just so white. Like mm-hmm. I just I couldn't pra- I didn't see myself in the practices. Mm-hmm. Like it taught me a lot about how to um, respect um, conjure. And Mm -hmm. how to be ethical about it. And I don't think Mm -hmm. I would have learned that and the weight of that um, Mm -hmm. um, without being a part of a coven and had like Mm -hmm. an elder to guide me. I don't think Mm -hmm. I would have had that without a crone um, Mm -hmm. or some type of elder. Mm -hmm. But what, what, when you asked like what, what caused you to become, so I was like, let me think about it. I was like, yeah, it was because I was like, I'm not really feeling this. It was Alexandrian witchcraft. And I'm like, I'm not from this, this this isn't my lineage. It don't feel Mm -hmm. right. And so I became solitary because no one else was doing what I needed for my spiritual connection. And now as I come out of Mm -hmm. really like European based um, witchcraft, I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, now it's, I need an elder and I need Mm -hmm. community for accountability and to like have someone to talk to about like, dreams and like these these things that are coming up for me like meeting new ancestors i'm like hold up a second like i need like we need community and so i think it's and and i I know as an introvert i'm thinking oh i can't i can't be around people all the time and that's i don't think that's what you're saying right no it's like community can look so different than how um if we look at community outside of a western framework there are so many possibilities, probably than the ones that we are immediately coming to mind, like immediately yes. come to mind. Girl, yes. Yeah. I'm so smiling like, so ear to ear. Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like you, like it's, um, mm, like I'm thinking of like how, like how I, my herbalism and how I'm, I, um, what I practice at home and like the herbs I make. And then when a community member brings in their herbs. And how the, like the the magic and the intention behind like what is brought in with their herbs and their knowledge, you know what I mean? And like if I have a question, I can go ask an elder yes. over here or a friend over here. Like that's yes. what community can look like. You can still be in your house whipping yeah, up yes. your conjure, you know, getting your thing. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you have all these beautiful resources outside of yourself. And yeah. like you said, it's not just humans. It's not just on this plane. We we don't die alone. We got our ancestors are yes. at our back. So even when you yes. are practicing by yourself, you are not by yourself. You You're not. Like yourself. who are you conjuring with? Like it's normally some ancestor spirit guide, you know, whatever level of ascension that that energy is on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's wonderful and that's lovely. Um but also understand that those same forces can bring you about a community that is just elevating the Get out of you. Yes. You know what I mean? And like all the things that your ancestors asked you to come to earth to do. Like I'm Mm -hmm. super big on that. I'm super big on what is it that I'm here to do and making sure that I get that done. Number one, I'm a Capricorn sun. So that's just part of what it is. And then I'm a Libra (laughs) moon, which means I'm all about like these community codependent, you know, relationships. So that's what I, what my main focus is, but I've been, oh, how do you say, validated in those thoughts and actions by looking at how the ancestors work. You know, how many times have I walked in somebody's dreams and done work with them and didn't even know I did it until they called me the next day and say, girl, you was in my dream telling me to do blah, 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 blah. I'm like, child, you know what I mean? I ain't, did I? Thanks. You know what I mean? (laughs) Like there's so many times because they elevate you to these levels that you don't you don't have the mental capacity to even understand right mm-hmm. so when i think and i don't know it just keeps coming back to me that like being a solitary witch is about being outcast believing those stories of being outcast watching movies that says the the witch the crone all those things live out in the forest by herself mm-hmm. um so many of us are introverts because we're empaths, which makes us feel very isolated. 
because when we go into a space, we can feel so many things and we can see that the people are not necessarily wanting to be aware or heal those things. So it makes us go, oh, it's safer just to be in the house by myself. You know what I mean? If I'm going to feel all this shit, like I was talking about that with one of my closest friends yesterday. If I'm going to feel all that anxiety, let me just stay at home with my own anxiety. You know, so there's just all these things that put us in this kind of, I just want to be alone or I just want to do this magic alone or what have you. Mm -hmm. Um, And eventually um, you need help. You know, eventually you need, you have to elevate out of that. Eventually you have to come from the stereotypes that are in the movies because there's a reason that this lady is a crone. What society, I mean, not a crone, but an isolated witch in the forest. Why? Why? Is anybody asking why she's out there? What society put her out there? What choices did she make to say it's safer to be in the forest by myself than to be amongst others? And why do we even know about her? We know about her because somebody had to go and visit her because they needed help healing. They needed help. Mm -hmm. And so she has to serve the greater community. So she's still not by herself. Exactly. You know, so, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, she's still not by herself. She's still out there working her herbs, doing her thing, and making sure that when the children and the mothers and the fathers are coming to get whatever that they have, you know, what it is they need to get their healing. You know, but you have to question why that story is continually told. Why? And what society is supporting that? Versus the society that we're seeing now on social media, where you see 15, 20, 30, 75 women at the water in white. Who's telling that story? We are, because that's our truth, is that there are 15, 20, you know, 100 women out there holding hands and giving offering to the great mother spirit to the ancestral spirit to make sure that we're all loved, that we're all protected and that we all have wealth. Nobody's telling that story because who benefits from it? So it okay. benefits a bigger, wider capitalist society to say, oh yeah, you a witch? You better go out into the woods and be by yourself and be an introvert and not talk to nobody because you're pretty fucking scary and you better be in, you know, in isolation. Mm. And so I think that my ancestors are really upset with that because, again, if you go on YouTube, which many of our listeners and communities are, it really supports the solitary witch thing. You see one woman on there telling you how to maybe do ancestral money by yourself. And you keep coming back to her and she's giving astral, astrological predictions by herself in a room by herself. You don't see her on there with three or four other women discussing what today's lunar eclipse means. It's one person. Are you talking about like within the black community? Because I want to really be clear about when we're separating with like the black community from like other communities. Are you talking about like within the black community on like YouTube? I'm talking about YouTube. I'm talking about America. Oh, okay. So, so, yeah, so yeah, Western, straight up. Like, Western I have no society. reference to okay. America. Gotcha. But I'm saying okay. America as a whole. Like, when I go online and I'm looking at different things to learn about, but, well, what's, the, what's, the, what's going on in the cosmos today? I see one woman, you know what I mean, giving the information or one man giving the information. I see some people interviewing, you know what I mean? But I don't ever see three or four or five community groups of people talking about what's going on in astrology yes. because they study it. I ain't never seen it. I see what you're saying now. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. If it and it and so it keeps telling you that it's best for you to do this in you know, one on one in isolation. And it's that again supports you separating from it it it's in my opinion it feeds capitalism in that I now have to separate or compartmentalize my spirituality from my bigger life. Mm, come through. Yes. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Cannot continue. Yeah. And it can't continue. And there's this idea around like, I don't want to call it privacy, but like mm-hmm. being, 
um, secretive, whether mm-hmm. it's for protection or mm-hmm. whether I, th- I think like you were talking about before, there's also a checks and balance system that needs mm-hmm. to, uh, to be there too of like, if you're off doing something that maybe you shouldn't be doing, <laughs> Yes, like there's been, I've definitely, yeah, I've had a lot of mentees that'll come to me and say, I'm really upset at this, this, and this. And they won't say upset, but they're like, this is what I'm dealing with. And so I'm thinking about doing this spell. And then, you know, like you said, the accountability of the elder says, well, do you want that to come back on your karma? Do you really want to do that spell? And they're like, oh, and I'm like, okay, so let's now think about how we can do that spell to be inclusive of healing. And then we focus on it like that. Yes, exactly. You know what I'm saying? And so the trust is there. Like, you have to be accountable. You don't have to do these things in isolation. And also, I'm here to support that healing that not only you're going through, but whatever that situation is to bring it to a wholeness. Right. That that in itself is powerful. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like, being vulnerable and saying, like, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going through. This is the steps that I saw fit to take is this a good idea? Like that in itself is powerful because then you're holding yourself accountable and you're being very open about where you're coming from. And then that leads to, 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 to more of the, um, when you do, when you do, you know, do your conjure, like you can bring that full self to the table. Yep. Because you don't want your magic coming at you sideways. Like you said this, but under that you were so, you know, (laughs) They, right. We did this, that, and the other because you weren't yes. clear. You weren't clear in your intention. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then coming from that place of love, everybody does their work for different reasons, right? I just happen to be a part of an egg bay or a house. Uh, an egg bay is the is a term that I that I'm just basically calling church at this point. So an egg bay is actually in um, West Africa is what you would call your voodoo house. And so inside your egg bay is your house of all the people who do work with you. Um, And all your ancestors join forces with the spirits, et cetera, et cetera, all under one roof. And so your, my particular egg bay works in the white light. Always the white light, always the white light. White light is love. White light is healing. So that's where I come from. That's what I was born to do. I don't got no judgment about what other folks do. If they part of the red egg bay, if they part of the black egg, I don't know, child. I, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. But what I have definitely learned from the voodoo is that my mental space is limited. And that's normally where judgment comes from. Like this kind of limited mental space where you just don't know everything that's going on. So you can't judge. Um, and so everybody does their work for whatever ways. And so I am just like, I just want folks as they're entering into this understanding that it is very, very real and constantly questioning what thought process are you under based on your society? Yes. Where does the society, where does the society hold your power? What Mm -hmm. have you bought into? And why? And stuff about being a solitary witch. If you're asking yourself why you're even a witch, even what does the wit word witch mean? If you look on my on my um, Instagram, you scroll way down to maybe a year and a half ago. I don't remember. I put on there, I'm not a witch. I'm a priestess. What is the difference? What's the difference? You know, um, why is there a difference? Is there even a difference? What do you consider yourself? Um, where does the word witch in this country and context mean? You know, so once you examine all those things and really determining through your own meditations and your own prayers, who and what you are, because you have to know that you are under a spell of capitalism. Mm. You are under a spell of whatever country that you're listening from at this point. You're under the spell of what your family has taught you. You know, so really being able to get down to numero uno and asking yourself a lot of whys. And as you grow and evolve and you find freedom, you'll find yourself like breaking out of a lot of stuff that you, you know what I mean? (laughs) That you initially were like, oh, I'm gung ho, you know what I mean? About being a solitary witch. And maybe that's the 
best possible thing for you right now because you're in the middle of Montana. <laughs> and if you haven't uh. ever been to Montana, anybody who's listening in the United States and Montana, girl, honey, there ain't nothing out there. I mean, it's just, I mean, it's animals, you know what I mean? It's just animals and nature and it's beautiful and it's pristine, right? But like, you, you might not get a lot of human folks to be able to, you know, touch and agree and hold hands and kumbaya with, right? Yeah, they, so that might be the not, best. Thing. I don't know, I've been there, but maybe not a lot of black folks. But people say, right, right, and there's right, lots of black folks, so maybe I don't right, know. Right, <laughs> exactly. So that might be the very best possible thing for you at the moment. Um, but I just want people to really, really, really be clear, you know what I'm saying, on their why, you know, mm-hmm. and what does that power mean to you, you know, to be a conjure person and to be a person of color? And is it best utilized alone? You know, is it? And are you defining yourself as a witch? Or are you defining yourself as a priestess? Are you defining yourself as a high priestess? Are you defining yourself as a wizard? Are you defining yourself um, as, for example, some people have a gift and their gift seems so natural that they don't even know that it's a gift, right? Like, um, how do I describe it? They're a giver. Like they, they see somebody and they're like, oh, that person just needed a pencil. And they always have the right pencil. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it seems so insignificant to them, but they literally are able to conjure exactly what folks need and what you need at that particular moment. And it's so small. You know, so just really looking at what that, what all of that means for mm-hmm. you. Um, and I understand Again, me and one of my close friends were talking about technology and how it's going. It's it's beyond our thought process at this point. So right now, saying that you're a witch is very popular. Why? Because if you put it out there one time on Instagram, all Instagram is going to do is feed back to you all positive things about being a witch and being a solitary witch. And then you just keep getting fed that same thing on Facebook, that same thing on social media, the same thing every time you pick up your phone. You know what I mean? That energy just keeps coming back to you. So it's kind of like what you're manifesting, what you're calling in with the language you use to describe yourself and what you do as well. Yep. And it's going to pump you up. Yes, that is very true. I, okay, can, can we go back though? Because um, you were talking about when you went from um, calling yourself a witch to calling yourself a priestess. Can you talk more about that journey and like what? Um, oh, what I never called change? myself a witch. I've never ever called oh, myself okay. a witch. Sorry. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. I've always been a priestess. I didn't even know that a witch was a thing um, because I was so young when I started on this journey. I was 18. And before that, it just never occurred to me that something that was something to be. I wanted to be a doctor. So shit, that's what I was looking at. <laughs> uh, you know I, mean? I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a CEO. <laughs> Yeah, I was like, I either want to be a doctor or a CEO. Like, that was my only trajectory for my life. Um, so having any of this going on in my life at this point is not something that I saw for myself pre, you know, 16, 17 years old. Um, so when I was first introduced to every concept of spirituality, it was from um, other older Black women. And I just remember feeling this tremendous sense of freedom when I met them. Um, and that look of like, man, I want to be like y'all. Mm-hmm. Like, that's dope. Like, oh, I don't have to act like I don't have a spirit or like the things that I was asking about in church that just didn't fit. I don't have to be like those ladies in the church who go to church and they go out for the rest of the week and they don't seem to have like all that much of a connection. Like they would pray and stuff, but they just didn't seem to have this empowered connection. It was always a suffering, please, please help me connection. And these women, they did not have that. Like, I remember the first time a priestess told me, oh, my mom was sick. And so this is what she said. I petitioned spirit and for someone who could help heal her. And two days later, an herbalist called me and said, somebody gave me your number saying that you needed help with something. 
And I'm looking at her like, you petitioned who? <laughs> you said what? What the what? And somebody called her who? <laughs> right. So it wasn't nobody on their knees at the end of their bed. No, no tea, no shade, because I still pray on my knees at the end of the bed because I feel like it's a very humble thing to do. Um, and I'm in a very receptive place when I'm, you know, praying in that position. Mm-hmm. But this lady wasn't doing that. This lady said, I petitioned, meaning like I just called, you know, said what it is that I needed to say, sat back and waited for them to show up to help heal my mama. Mm -hmm. And at this time, this woman is 60 something years old, right? So we're not talking about me being 20 and her being 35, right? And I'm like, oh, this is a cool lady. No, this is like, she's been doing this. So these are my first introductions to African spirituality. And I was like, I want that. Mm-hmm. You know, it was my first time ever saying I'm not a Christian. But I was like, I know, I know these, these women are not compartmentalizing. These ladies are not going to churches and then coming out still begging. Um, they're not confused on what God looks like. You know, because, uh, you know, a lot of us as kids were like, oh, so there's this white guy who lives in our heart with long hair. That if you pray to him, you might not be a sinner anymore. You know, so I'm coming from that kind of view to a person who was saying as a black woman with locks that she petitioned and shit showed up. I was like, yeah, bro, I'm not going back. <laughs> <laughs> that is so different. There's a lot more yeah. empowerment to that, and a lot more. Um, yeah. What is it? What's the word? Where like you're just it, 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 you know it's through self. Like you know you're not doing it yeah. alone, but you're not yeah. listening yourself in order to get it right. done. Like you're like I put he in this work, like, I petition this. I and then I am work universal together. consciousness. That's yes. what she told me in that moment. I mm-hmm. am universal consciousness. You are universal consciousness. So in your universal consciousness. Show up and ask for what is needed so that you'll get it because you don't want your mama to keep suffering. So just be the universal force that you are. I'm down. Let's do it. (laughs) Yes. Sign me up. Yes. That is exactly what it feels like. Yeah. 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 And I think especially as Black people, um, we are constantly being fed that we are not in power like we we don't have any power we need to like shrink ourselves make ourselves smaller let me not quote that amazing woman <laughs> but like, you know what i mean like we <laughs> right. like, we're, we're we're told that we need to like just be small and depend on someone yes. else aka yes. this white savior or black savior yes. depending on how you want to argue what jesus yes. was i don't right really, whatever yeah nobody but you know so, so, that, so, yeah. so someone else is like empowering you gotta just put that power to someone else and let Mm -hmm. them handle it and it's Mm -hmm. like no 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 this is this is something we have within us we i i swear we are the ones that bought brought the spirit back into whatever christianity was before it had black people exactly (laughs) exactly let me not let me exactly (laughs) and this is the so this is the magic that i'm just going to be a banner for voodoo Voodoo is about freedom. Like everybody thinks voodoo is about all these kind of power sources or manipulation. You know, like I'm going to manipulate the universe to make myself well, or I'm going to manipulate the universe to get more money, or I'm going to manipulate the universe to do this, this, and this. The way that I walk in the world and that I wake up every single day being a voodoo and priestess is this source of freedom that is very rarely known in humanity. Mm-hmm. Listen to me very carefully. Humanity. Meaning my breath alone is my wealth. I ain't got to manipulate shit. I know that when I am talking to a white man that I'm never going to be lesser. That's not a self-esteem issue. I know that. I know that because I have my spirit. And when you have your 
spirit or your spirits and your ancestors, when you have that full sense of self, the freedom is beyond what Trump is going to do. Because Trump will have to come to your grandmother to see what's going on with his destiny. Mm -hmm. It's beyond anything. So as I walk in the world, I don't have this sense of being cropped up. I have a sense of, oh, I was born in America to do something. Because my spirits could have had me be born anywhere in the damn world. Okay, so I'm in America. So what y'all want me to do here while I'm born in America as a female? With this particular brown skin? What are the lessons I'm supposed to learn? What is it that I'm supposed to give? And when I lay my physical body to rest, then I've completed that mission because that's what they asked me to do. Mm -hmm. And that's just the freedom. That's the freedom of being connected to your true divine spirit. And that's what they're there for. That's what the spirit of the voodoo are about. It's not even about conjuring. It's not about herbs. It's not about spiritual baths. It's not about anything else besides aligning you with your highest self to do your mission so that you are free. You're free. And that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. I'm, I'm, taking I got. It, I'm taking it all you're saying because it reminds me that every time I see something about um, Black spirituality, religion, faith-based practices, conjure... I take a moment to separate, okay, what is whiteness coming through? And like mm -hmm. our, uh, what what has the white man told us to tell us, uh, to mm -hmm. believe about ourselves? Mm -hmm. Like with these Disney voodoo right. and stuff, you right. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then yeah. what do I feel is true? Innately. Yeah. yeah, innately. Mm -hmm. Like what is my instinct telling me? And my instinct, now don't get me wrong, my instinct really, is really true. But I, it, it's I'm doing some work around decolonizing myself and anti blackness oh, in my own self. So you know absolutely. you gotta you gotta gauge you you gotta use your own gauge. But yeah. I love the way you put that about voodoo because as soon as people hear it, I would say now in the circles we run with probably not as often. But you still get mm -hmm. it. Like the other day I was at a. I was doing a table of it, and this one was like, "No, I got I got Jesus." I'm like, "Okay, that's cool. I, yeah. I got." I got my ancestors. Whatever works for you. Yeah, honey. whatever <laughs> works. Yeah, and that's <laughs> how I am. I'm like, it's cool you got Jesus because guess what? If that anchors you in your truth, you see what I'm saying? That's a whole probably lineage that I don't even know or understand. You see what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily, that's not for me in this particular lifetime as far as Jesus. My belief at this current moment is Jesus was probably just another voodoo person. Great. You see what I'm saying? Right. But I'm never going to ever make that an issue between me and you loving each other. Right. And it's a, what you said. If it anchors you in your truth, mm -hmm. every time when something comes across your path, um, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to conjure work, you need to ask yourself if it anchors you in your truth. Mm -hmm. And what we're talking about with being solitary, which is it's important to have community so that they can be the mayor too. Cause sometimes yep. we need other people. Like, yep. like they're, they help us to, to recalibrate our compass every single yeah. time. Yeah. Um, every single the second, time. Well, the first tenet of voodoo to me is, is from what I've been taught is character. And through the character, you also get freedom. So the, what the name or the word voodoo means spirit. Um, but they're huge on character. And again, going back to the original, you know, conversation and what we were talking about is like anchoring in your truth. And do you have good character? You know what I mean? Are you doing the right thing? Are you making sure that you are telling the truth in every aspect of what you're doing? And so when you are in solitude, you know what I mean? Which, again, through meditation and different things like that, you can always come to your your truth. But who helps you with that truth of it not being a colonized conception? 
you know, how, who's helping you because all of us are reading information and gathering information and all those different things. And so it's just so important for us to, to come to a place where we are understanding what we're communing with. And are we communing with truth? Are we communing with good character? Are we communing with freedom? Uh. So let me ask you this. So do you think this, I, um, I don't want to generalize, but do you think some of the reasons why um, there are so many black solitary practitioners and, and, and I'm no new into the, the realm of um, what it looks like to, to practice my conjure within the black mm-hmm. diaspora. Like I'm okay. automatically a part of it cause I'm black, you know, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah, uh, but yeah. like new to the community. <laughs> But do you think um, that there's this idea around being super guarded? Do you think that's rooted in our trauma of it being deeply shamed Girl. when we came here? Like, First tell me about, more. Come say, on, say that's not even a say question. Say come on, come on. Say that's something. not even a question. Let's not even let's not even answer that. I mean, all you have to do in two seconds is look at history, and that answers the question. Mm, boom. True. True that. True that. You- Great. You were told you couldn't even attend church. You couldn't speak. You couldn't read. You lived your entire existence in fear and in work mode. You didn't have any time to sit and think and be. There's been not a lot of opportunity in our most recent three to four generations that we have been able to do any of this in really a lot of part of the world, beyond America, in South America, in Canada, there has not been an opportunity for the world to be themselves. We were busy being conquered and in defense. It's not even a question. Of years have gone all over the world doing this shit. Not a question. <sighs> so one of the things I find difficult, is, like with with the dis, with the distinguishing of like what's this, what's whiteness, like where's the whiteness in this, um, is like imagining what spiritual practices can look like outside of whiteness, like what my ancestors were doing and how Mm -hmm. that like community looked like. Mm -hmm. What have been your ideas around that? Cause I I read, like I read like Maladomo, Maladomo, yeah. So may the, Mm -hmm. of, of, of water and spirit. Spirit. Mm -hmm. Um, And that book spoke to me so much, but there were other Mm -hmm. things about it that I'm like, although I don't agree with all of it, it was so rooted in community. And I, mm-hmm. and I wonder like, because he, he's also coming from a Western um, mm-hmm. thought process with, and that was a large part of the book was like, do we really want this black person who's been tainted by the white man coming back <laughs> up, in, up in here? But you know what I mean? Like uh, I, I'm trying to find remnants wherever I can of what, my spiritual practice can look like outside of whiteness. And it is so so hard. So two things, two things come to mind. Number one, yes, I thought about this a lot in college, like when I was in my twenties, because there were this, there was a huge leap in my twenties for folks to just go right into comedic or Egyptian spirituality, because it was like, these are the ways that these have not, that hasn't been tainted. And so these are places that we can go to look towards, you know, something that hasn't been tainted by whiteness. And then, of course, as I grow, I'm like, how is that even possible? Because unless you just get a direct download, you know what I mean? You can't really know. Like, I can't read this book on, like you said, anybody who hasn't been tainted by their own history. Like, it has to be a direct channel. You know what I mean? If they're going to write a book, it has to be a direct channel. It can't be something that they read in the hieroglyph. A hieroglyph, again, was translated by a person, whatever. 
So that kind of just goes back to like just not trusting man. Like I just need this to come straight from spirit. Um, which is another reason divination is so freaking awesome. Um, so yes, that is very, very difficult to do that. And number two, I would say don't try, right? I would say don't try. Come from a place where the whiteness is not the center, first of all. Like if you can just really start to train your mind to come away from a white center, then because then you become obsessed with this white centeredness. Cool. You know what I mean? Just stop, constantly stop over, yeah, me. over and stop over. Stop me. This ain't church. Get out of here. <laughs> stop. stop. Yeah, so just stop trying. Like, just stop and just make yourself the center. Like, make your ancestors the center. Make you the center of everything that you freaking do. And things just shift naturally. You know what I mean? Eat something. Talk about something where they're not the center. And your whole brain is going to be blown away. You know what I mean? It just, it just. Put your pend- pendulum right where it needs to be. Well, damn. This is why I need yeah. Because I needed that. Yeah. Thing. Thank yeah. you. Most of the shit that yes. we use in our house, most of the things that we do are invented by people of color. Right? You know what I'm saying? But we get caught up in that we have to pay the light bill to a white organization. You know, and if you just take a minute and decentralize that for a second, you realize you're giving homage. Like, I'm turning on the light and I'm giving homage to another brother. Like, if I need to invent something, like, that brother will come through in my in my spiritual practice. And that ancestor, you write his name down and he'll come through and give you all the shit that you think Tesla did. Damn. Move, move your pendulum, boo. Damn. So true. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Okay. So, mm, mm. so how do we start weaving these communities? Like, how, how, well, what are My some God, of the- you guys have it the easiest. You have it the easiest. <laughs> you know what I mean? All you got to do is go on Facebook. All you got to do is go on Instagram. All you got to do is like, you know, go- how I've always found my communities um, I start with one and it just kind of spreads out. So like when I moved to Atlanta, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, I really love meditation. And I would just type in, in Google maps, child, that I had to print shit out, you know, meditation in Atlanta. And I would find a meditation center and then I would sit there and I would be patient. And then I would meet somebody new at my kid's school and they would be like, I think I like meditation too. And then I would bring her, you know what I mean? Like it's just, it really so that's what I'm saying it's so much easier now really like if you go online and you start to see somebody that makes sense then you can either reach out to them um you can just sit in quietly and see if they're actually having things physically you know you don't have to automatically join nothing you know what I mean that's just because you attend or you're watching doesn't mean that you have to you know be all of a sudden committed to anything you have to feel what's right. Watch what they're doing. See if it aligns with what it is that you're doing. You know what I mean? Um, and you don't have to start big. You know, you can start with casual conversations. Um, you don't have to do a whole ayahuasca journey. <laughs> you know what I mean? With a group of black women who are into art. Like, you don't have to do that. You know, it's just one small thing at a time to build your own trust in those communities. Be very, very, very watchful when you're first joining these Facebook groups or these Instagrams or whatever. Be very watchful about what it is they're saying, who is saying it, and why. You know, if it's a million people online putting their spell on Instagram, you probably don't want them. You know what I mean? If they're having conversations, that's one thing. But if they're straight up showing all their workings, that don't really make a lot of sense. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? It just, that does not, if somebody's putting, if someone's instructing someone on how to make a honey jar, that's one thing. You know what I mean? That person maybe is the teacher or the mentor or whatever the case may be. But if everybody is constantly on there showing their candle working and like, look, I did the candle working and i you know, my boyfriend broke up with his ex-girlfriend and now we're back together. Like, does that feel great? You know what I'm saying? So that's what I mean by watching slowly. Yeah. You know, see how you feel mm-hmm. about the groups that are doing whatever they're doing. And if you love breaking people up, then that's the group you want to be in. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? If you're uh-huh. one who's like, no, I really love authentic love and like bringing families together, then watch the people who are doing that. And bit yeah. by bit, you'll find the people that gravitate towards you and who speak your language deeply, mm-hmm. um, really, really deeply. And then when you meet the people in person or on a Zoom conference or whatever, watch their behavior, watch how they move, watch their postures. You know what I'm saying? Like when you and I get on the phone, all of we're giggling and I already know what that is. Like it's our spirits being so happy that we saw each other, that we met each other, that we got to come together. Like we can't even stop laughing for the first five to 10 minutes. We on a dang call. That's a good freaking sign. Yes. Every time. (laughs) Every time. Right. Right. So just be very patient and protective and watching what feels like joy to you and walk Mm -hmm. towards it. Cause that's what family feels like. And they're going to eventually you know how family is, child. It got the ups and the downs. You know what I'm saying? So don't judge just because there's a down moment or somebody's calling you on your card. You know what I mean? Or whatever. That's the truth of balance. You know? So it's not going to be all like pickles and popsicles, you know? But what is so, what feels good? Did you just say pickles and popsicles? Yes. Yeah, I'm so... I'm so done. I'm glad you brought that up because that's key. Like, like yes, it's easy to find community. Like, or or, or it's easy to find folks on the interwebs now because mm-hmm. you know uh, this is becoming more popular, especially mm-hmm. like with all that's going on, Beyonce, mm-hmm. all of that. But um, it like really being um, se- like being secure in yourself and trusting your instinct. Is so key because you have to have enough trust in yourself to to mm-hmm. know how to discern things and what right. what works with for you and with you, right. um, and so that you're not always in like guard mode. You know what I mean? And like putting up these walls so you can't see the blessings when they come. Like right. you have to be able to be open enough to see things. That don't mean you take it on. That don't mean you take it in. You just have right. to be open enough to see things. Right. And, and and that's where we're coming out with the solitary wish thing is like being so blocked. Yep. You're not letting anything out and you're not letting anything in. Anything in. Mm-hmm. Yep. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Woo. Goodness. Okay. <laughs> so we don't have a whole. Can you tell me, um, tell us actually a little bit more about um, Mommy Wata because I think that that like Mommy Wata means a lot to me but I don't know if everyone else is familiar so can you tell me more about Mommy Wata um, and her story because we were talking about this earlier um, so Mommy Wata is a is so most people who are probably listening to this are familiar with um, West African Ifa or Ifa, which is what everybody hears about when they say the Orisha. Um, and so sometimes uh, people are like, well, what's the difference between the Orisha and the Voodoo? It's not a lot. I'm not going to say it's like this wide, huge variation. It's just a different tradition. Um, and so Mami Wata is a whole plethora of spirits. So you say Mami Wata, then think about there being a thousand spirits underneath that umbrella (laughs) and you kind of have some star players or what have you but they're just this whole pantheon and then the orisha have their own pantheon of spirits as well and so the things that you see with beyonce are a part of the orisha and their um you know, lineage of spirits. And Mami Wasa is just a tad bit different than that. In Mami Wasa, the ancestors come first. None of the other spirits, because you have to walk through the ancestors before you can get through those others. So that's why family is important. Healing your family is important. Um, Having your own solitary base is very, very important with Mami Wasa. And so the things that we see in the media um, around Mami Wata are uh, a woman with huge hair that has usually has like a snake around her neck or she's a mermaid because Mami Wata is water and it's pigeon, but it's, it's 
from what we understand, Mami Wasa was not derived from the English version of white people saying that there's that Mami is a mother and Wasa is Wasa. From what we understand, this is this Mami Wasa was its own spirit, and we told them like this is what she's called, right? So it's not some pigeon translated situation. It's Iwe Budun is from West Africa, Benin, Togo, that whole kind of coast. And it's believed that those traditions came from Africa, not just West Africa, but as Africans moved throughout the diaspora, they moved to West Africa from Sub-Saharan Africa, from Egypt, et cetera, et cetera. And that these uh, priests and priestess who are aligned with Mama Uwata, it only comes through your blood. It's not something that you can choose. So be very, very clear on what I'm saying. Anybody who's listening, you are not a Mami Wasa because you want to be. You are a Mami Wasa because it runs through your bloodline. If something runs through your bloodline, that means generation after generation after generation after generation, all the way back to Egypt, all the way back to Lucy. You know what I'm saying? These, that is what is a part of your birth and your birthright. Um, and so a lot of times you're called to be Mami Wasa because it's already in your blood. It's already what you are passed here to do as a priestess. There are people who can recognize and have an altar to Mami Wasa because that spirit will benefit them in their life. Is that, is that clear? Yes. Um, okay. yes, there's like a, there's a difference. Sorry, I had myself on mute. It takes a second for it to come off. Okay. Um, there's a difference between, oh, what is it called? Like a venerator and like someone who practices. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So a venerator, you're there, you practice that spirit loves you, wants to help you to create whatever it is that's a part of your destiny. We can help you. Right. And then there are those who are priests of mommy Watson who normally do the work, you know what I'm saying? Of mm -hmm. mommy Watson. And that's just a part of what's going on in their bloodline. The spirit helps them. It usually helps the bigger community, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so that's the the difference. And so the representations have always been, you know, mermaids and these kind of mystical creatures. A lot of things happen around the water, all that kind of thing. And water is your first source of life, which again can be associated with the mother, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it just keeps going on down the road. So mermaids have always been a part of African mythology. It's not a white concept. <laughs> it's not. It's a concept it's because not. the water exists and mermaids exist, and that's just what it is. That's exactly. And happens, right? it runs across right. different cultures. Like, yeah, it's not just white people yes. out here with like, red yes. hair. Yeah, no. Yes, exactly. You're like no. the, the only one. Uh, it just so happens I have a birth sister named Ariel, which I think is fucking cool as hell. <laughs> She's one of the dopest people on the earth. So, yeah, like, that's. Mami Wata is Voodoo. You know, it's a spirit of Voodoo. Like I told you, Voodoo just means spirit um, in that tradition. If if you go anywhere and you say spirit, it's the same thing. It's fearful because that's what white folks have used to put you in fear of that particular word. Y'all, it's just a word that means spirit. Anytime you walk around and you say spirit, you don't get spooked out. So it's no reason for you to be spooked out by Voodoo. It's just a translation. I don't know what the German word for spirit is. A spiritismo? I don't know. That's probably Spanish. But that's the same thing as going to Benin and saying voodoo. You get what I mean? It's just a word um, that now has become this huge thing for folks to be um, afraid of. Mm -hmm. And so one of the greatest things with voodoo is that it works with your destiny. It works with your ancestral spirits and they're no punk. They are direct. They are clear and they do not care about you feeling good. Feeling good is, 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 you know, kind of just a human thing, right? Like, oh, I just want to feel good about blah, 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 blah. So when you go get a Mommy Watson reading, it's no guarantee that you're going to come out feeling like, oh, bells and whistles. No. Because your ancestors are there to put you on a mission. And so it can be super great because they're like, you're already on your mission. You're in alignment. We just need you to do this, this, and this. You know what I mean? But they're not 
these psychic readings that you go in and somebody tells, you know, where you feel, oh, somebody saw me and it feels so good and blah, 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 which normally people get in tarot card readings and stuff like that. Like, it's just all these feel good feelings because they finally feel seen. They don't feel alone. They feel like, oh, now I know spirits watching you. The voodoo take that for granted, right? Because they're like, of course we're watching you. Of course we're here. We stand with you every single day. We make sure that you're breathing. Like, what are you talking about? So they're not in, in, in any kind of vein of making you feel good during a reading. Normally, you go to get a mommy water reading, and all they're concerned about is if you're on your road, if your family is safe, if you are safe, if you are going to make it to the finish line of your life. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what they're here to do. And if you are off your road, if you're off your destiny, if you have blocks, if some something has come on your road that is taking you off your destiny, then we need to make sure we're doing the work to get you back in tune with your star player and that you're walking the walk that you're supposed to walk mm. and that you are free. Yes. That's mm. it. And I, in my opinion, the Orisha are the same way. They're there to give you tools. They're there to tell you the truth. They're there to empower you in whatever ways that empower your gifts so that you can walk your walk. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? I happen to be born a Mami Wata. If I was not born a Mami Wata, I don't know what tradition I'll be born to. But that's also what makes me so open and not judgmental about the whole Christian thing that we talked about. Right? Because I'm like, I don't know. She might have been born to walk the Christian path because she's going to read, you know what I mean? Like that truth aligns with her star destiny. It makes sense for her. You know what I mean? Uh So that's, that's what it's like. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Um, And it, everything is all inclusive. You know, as I've grown older, there is no beginning and there is no end to the voodoo because spirit does not, energy may change, but it just never dissipates. And I'm always in awe. I'm always in awe. Mm. You know what I mean? And how it shows up, you know what I mean, in real life. And something that I would have swore was bad. You know what I mean? Like, oh, that's bad. That's bad. And then fear will say, no, that's their lesson. Because that's their destiny. And they have to learn that lesson to get to their highest destiny. Mm. And I'd be like, oh, shit, let me shut up. And just make sure they have what they need <laughs> to get to their destiny. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? Like, it, it, you know, I'm like, wow, she had two miscarriages. Like, why would this person, you know, go through that? That's so bad. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, 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 no. You don't Redefining know anything. Redefining what's bad yeah. and what's good. And you don't like, know there, anything. Is that it? Yeah, if that's even a thing. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm, yeah. And yeah. so when like uh, if, if you came to me and you had some type of issue like that, we would first go to spirit. I wouldn't just automatically give you herbs. I would go and say, what is going on? Mm-hmm. You know, spirits, we're in pain. We don't know why she keeps losing her job. What's going on? Yeah. You know, and then the spirit says, OK, this is what's going on, blah, blah, blah. Now. And then we reset you. You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. on on your destiny, or we say, yeah, you're supposed to lose those jobs because you got this, this, and this coming, or you don't never listen. You keep losing your job because you don't never listen. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you keep doing the same thing over and over again. If you start to listen, then you're good. Yeah. You know, so that's why you just can't. You just kind of got to come to the table, and you got to go to the much higher higher source. Also, the reason that because that's such a powerful tool, you know, because the divination is such a powerful tool, that's also the reason why we don't do readings alone because what if the reader just is like oh yeah i know what the person's destiny is and i just manipulate it there's not another priest there to keep you accountable Mm. you know what i'm saying you just out here willy-nilly doing whatever Mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying and you have the power yeah Mommy, what it is, it's just so many things that you cannot do alone. You cannot do alone. And when you go to spirit, they'll say, well, we can't do that because you did that alone. So we don't even know. Ain't nobody with you. To do. <laughs> I don't know what you were doing there. I but... don't know what you were doing there, but <laughs> until you come with two more, two more priests, like we can't really activate that one for you, bro. Yeah. Keep on trying. <laughs> wow. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, so, so tell t- Tell us more about your work. Um, what are you currently 
offering. You were talking about some um, one-on-one sessions in your bio. What are, what, what are you currently working on and doing? So I am still doing the salon, which is my natural hair salon, but I also do these one-on-one sound healings that I didn't even know were going to happen the way that they happen. I just really enjoy doing sound healing because it's so nourishing for me. And I do recognize, um, based on how it happened with me, that this was a bridge for me to connect people with spirit because of all of the rat race, because of all of the things that happen in our lives. Um, we tend to be disconnected and again, compartmentalized. And so just uh, in rest alone, um, the reason I've worked with so many people on just rest in, in bigger form is because I really understand how much just being able to consciously and intentionally rest really reconnects you with spirit, really puts food on your heart and your soul for you to be able to do your life's work. So I was like, yo, I really want to do this. If I can just help people take naps, intentional naps, it's so different than exhaustion at the end of the night and then trying your best to get six hours of sleep. It's a different experience. So I was like, this is so great. So I started doing it and it just became these amazing shamanic experiences. So from the person that mentored me to me doing it myself, I was like, oh, wow, people see colors. Oh, and then I can interpret the colors that they see. They would start to see their ancestors. They would start to see spirit guides. And then I was like, oh my God, this is like a whole shamanic experience, but there's not a lot of conversation or talk or expectation of like leadership in terms of, um, uh, how do I describe it? I guess what I would say, like a lot of moving parts. You know, you just kind of come down, you come, you lay down, you see your colors. Afterwards, I can kind of teach you even what your colors are. So you can just ask me one time and I can tell you what they are. And from that point on, you could have 10 more uh, sound baths and see colors and be able to interpret it for yourself. Like I'm really huge on people doing their work themselves so that they don't put so much emphasis on the priestess or the guide or the shaman. So I was like, this is super cool because this is a way that people can empower themselves to understand what's going on with them and connect with spirit. And they get to sleep. Like, yes. Oh my God, I love it. So then <laughs> when I started to do them one-on-one, which I had not done them one-on-one before COVID, you know, like the things that I would do, I would go to maybe people's houses and do them for groups, but nobody had ever really hired me just to say, let me do it one-on-one. Everyone else I did one-on-one for would be like my son, you know, like people that I'll be trying to practice on. And these downloads started coming from spirit with them and for me. And so we, for me, meaning like spirit would tell me what to say to them. And I didn't know that was going to happen. Like I didn't set out six months ago to say, oh, I'm going to give spiritual readings during, I didn't know that was not a thing. And from the very first one, that's just what started happening. And I was like, yo, this is wild. And anybody even that comes to me today, I'll still be like, yo, this is crazy. Like, I I I don't know what they're going to say. You know what I mean? And then when they say it, like, I've seen inside people's houses and be like, oh, you got a bookshelf over here. And Spirit is saying that we they really love that bookshelf. Like, I didn't know that was going to happen. So I'm blown away by these experiences. And I honestly don't even know how to describe them on social media. You know what I mean? Like, I can try, but it just kind of, I'm, if I'm speechless within it myself, I don't know how to put that in content form. I don't know how to be a businesswoman in terms of Instagram and showing people, hey, this is, I don't know how to advertise this thing that feels like a miracle for both of us at that moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And so I, um, I have a hard time kind of like communicating it, what it is. So right now I'm still in the mode of, of communicating what a sound bath is because that's what I've been trained to give content on is, you know, a sound bath is intentional rest. Um, It's a way for you to reconnect with your spirit. It's time for you to um, have time for yourself. Um, All those kind of things. I don't really know how to explain that other side of what happens. Uh, um, And 
And before you were doing these one-on-ones, you did like check-ins for your, um, for your, for your other work. Like when you would do the sound baths, like, like in person, you would do like check-ins and stuff, right? Wait. Um, when you would check in to see how the person was doing, like after the, whatever session they did with you, oh, you did yeah. check in. Which yeah, is, yeah. Now which that is was different than what you're doing now. Yeah, that was always yeah. a thing. And that's, I, and I really love that about your, like, what you do is like, it's not just like, boom, boom, you're done. And then they go off. Like, you yeah, no, I got emails right and, now. Yeah. yeah. that I have to email them back and let them know like what happened during their, their sound bath. Right. You know what I mean? Where I got to go mm-hmm. through and I just sit there and like answer all the emails and get on a call with them or whatever. And just, that's probably what I feel like is one of the most important things with the sound bath. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I love that part of being able to be like, oh, you're having the sound bath. This is what happened to you. You didn't make anything up. Cool. Now let's go into what that means for you. You know right. what I'm saying? And somebody says, oh, my shoulder twitched. Okay, your shoulder twitched. I know I've been trained on shoulder twitching. It has to do with your heart chakra. Your heart chakra has something to do with you either opening or closing to love, blah, blah, blah. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that part is just things that I've studied throughout my entire life that, not entire life, stop lying, since I was about 17, 18 that I studied and I was just studying them for myself, super excited. And then when I get trained in sound bath, it's like all that stuff came together for me to be like, oh, now I can relay this information to other people. You know what I mean? About what goes on. So again, that's why I didn't know that I was going to get these downloads because I thought like it's, it's a miracle that I'm able to do all this study for 15 years. You know what I mean? about all this stuff. And now I get to even talk to people about what is going on in their hearts because they had a twitching during the sound bath. This is cool as hell. You know what I mean? So then to take that the step further and just get complete telepathic communication, like I was like, yo, son, this is dope. Yeah, like, that's ne- like next level. Like, oh my God. Yeah. So yeah. that being said, um, <laughs> Shayna is blessing um, the Sunsea community. Um, with a wonderful offer. Um, so if you um, use the promo code SUNSEED, um, you will get 20% off a virtual exhale or rest r- ritual with Miss Shayna. Um, so make sure you uh, reach out to Shayna. How, how can we reach out to you? How do we contact you? How do we learn about your services? Tell us something. So- um, online, I'm Shana Nunley. That's a long name, but hopefully you can look at it in the title. <laughs> it's a lot of N's. <laughs> it's a lot of L's, y'all. Sorry. Um, ShanaNunley.com. And then on Instagram, I'm Connect with Shana. And I think those are my only two. On Facebook, I'm my first and last name and my profile is open. And then my business page is called Born Free Spirit. And that there was no way for me. I can't figure out Facebook to change it to connect with Shana. So right now it's War Free Spirit. Okay. Um, and in all those places, you can email me. You can schedule yourself online. Um, because I was in the hair business, I'm big on online scheduling and, you know, empowering folks to like just get on the schedule when it's best for them. So if you reach out, I'm most likely going to send you a link. And with, uh, if you mentioned the podcast and I also send you what the promo code is so that you can schedule yourself at the time that's most convenient for you. Um, the difference between, there is a difference between what I'm offering. So exhale is just a place for you to exhale. It's just a place for you to get your sound bath. And then again, if you want questions answered, that's cool, but there's no spiritual reading involved in that. It's just, you know, again, if you had a switching or a colors or something like that, we can talk about that. But there's no downloads or anything like that. But then if you do rest rituals, then that's the full gamut of everything. Okay, I'm gonna have to sign for one of those rest rituals. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. So, um, so make sure um, you reach out to Shayna, promo code Sunseed. And then that offer ends December 19th. So make sure y'all get on that. If you miss it, you can still get on and connect with her. You know, support Black businesses, support Black women. Um, Oh, let me mention this too. If you have an organization 
that is a frontline worker. If there, there are so many people who are activists right now, all those types of folks, if cost is an issue, please reach out. I do group stuff. So if you're a part of a group and you want everybody to experience this, whether it's two of y'all or if it's 20 of y'all, let me know. I'm there. Like I'm there. Just let me know. Shane, I'm so mad you just now telling me this. Let me okay. talk to you after this recording. Okay, love you. Love you. Love you. I'm in trouble, y'all. Let me just sign up everyone now. Friends and friends of us. Okay, we all coming. We all coming. I'm so down. I am so grateful that you have once again blessed us with your truths, with your personality, with your time. Thank you so much, Shana, for being in on today. Welcome. And let me say to you that all of us thank you. Mm. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for being you. Thank you for allowing us to speak so freely and uninhibitedly. For all those, everybody who's listening, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for just showing up. But for you, Goddess, to build this platform and to do what you're doing, this is brave, you know? It's really, 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 really brave. And we're really, we are really proud. Thank you. I need, I'm going to just take that in. I'm going to just take it in and just say thank you. Breathe it in. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. Um, So for this BIPOC celebration giveaway, uh, make sure you post on IG and or Facebook a picture of something. you feel safe sharing about your magical practice um, and your favorite quote from this episode. I know I have written down a couple quotes from Shana. Where's the wisdom? And make sure you tag connect with Shana and the SSC um, handle as well, Sunsea Community. And then your handle will be put in a drawing for a free 60 minute tarot reading with me. I might have to rethink yeah. my tarot readings, though. I might have to get a whole squad up in here and tarot read it. <laughs> like a amazing. whole oracle squad. I love that it. That would be amazing. Yes. I love <laughs> it. Um, so make sure y'all are doing that. Make sure you reach out to Shayna and get to know her work. She's so dope. So dope. This Thank has you. been amazing, Shayna. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it, y'all. That's our show. Big thank you to Black Dream Escape for providing us with the intro and outro music for season two. We sincerely love your work and hope rest comes to us all. And big thank you to Vesta for producing our small but mighty podcast. This show is powered by the people. May the abundance come back to you and spread like wildfire. Sunseed Community is a space to practice collective healing. We do this through workshops, body and energy work, tarot, individual container building, and this podcast. To learn more, book us, and support us, visit sunseedcommunity.com and follow us on IG or Facebook at Sunseed Community. Bye, y'all. Rest will come. Rest will come. Rest will come. Rest will come.